All right, ready to go deep on this one. We're tackling a topic that's both fascinating and unsettling. Cattle mutilations. Yeah, it's one of those mysteries that really gets under your skin. And we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. We've got some intriguing source material to dig into. So Absolutely, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. This isn't just some fringe theory. We're talking about reported events, documented cases. Right, and these reports often come with a chilling amount of detail, details that point to something truly unusual. Exactly, it's those details, the specifics of these cases, that really set them apart from your average animal attack or you know natural causes. It's like trying to put together a puzzle where the pieces just don't quite fit. And people have been trying to solve this puzzle for decades. So let's rewind the clock back to the 1960s, the early days of these reports. Imagine. Rural America, a time of, well, change and upheaval. And suddenly, ranchers start finding their cattle dead, mm. but not just dead mutilated. And not in a way that could be easily explained away by predators or scavengers. I mean, the precision we're talking about, it's almost surgical. It's like something out of a horror movie. Almost. There was this one case detailed in a 1967 issue of the Pueblo Chieftain. The incisions were so clean, so precise, they seemed like the work of, well, a skilled surgeon. And to make things even creepier, there was this eerie absence of blood at the scene. Like, how do you explain that? It's one of the biggest head scratchers. It's almost as if the blood was, I don't know, drained or removed entirely. And it wasn't just a single isolated incident, right? Oh, absolutely not. This wasn't just a local phenomenon. It spread. Throughout the 1970s, we see a surge in these cases popping up all across the United States. It became this national thing, like people couldn't ignore it anymore. And of course, with that kind of attention, the speculation ran wild. Theories started popping up like mushrooms after a rainstorm. Yeah, everyone had a theory. Aliens, government experiments, the occult, you name it. But the truth is, none of those theories could fully explain what was happening. And it wasn't just happening in the U.S. either. We started seeing reports from all over the globe, cattle, horses, even sheep and goats. The reports were chillingly similar. It was like someone or something was following a terrifyingly consistent playbook no matter where they went. It's that consistency combined with those truly bizarre details, the precision, the missing blood, the lack of any other tracks or disturbances that makes these cases so fascinating, so unsettling. And so damn intriguing. So we've got these cases, right? Mm -hmm. And they're weird, like really weird. But what makes them different? What sets them apart from, say, a bear attack or just, you know, an animal dying naturally out in the open? It's a bunch of things, honestly. But the precision of the cuts is a big one. It's not just like something took a bite out of these animals. We're talking about incisions so clean, so deliberate, they almost look like, I don't know, a surgeon did them. Okay, that's a little creepy, right? But there's more to it, isn't there? Yeah, it's not just the cuts themselves. It's the lack of any sign of a struggle. No hoof prints, no disturbed ground around the body, nothing to suggest that the animal put up a fight. It's as if these animals were, I don't know how to put it, carefully selected and, well, subdued. That's just straight up unsettling. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Beamed up and dissected on a spaceship or something. And that's where some of the theories get really out there. A lot of people point to this lack of struggle combined with those precise cuts as evidence of advanced technology. Right, the alien theory. It's a popular one. But before we go full X-Files, what about other explanations? What about the government? I mean, they always seem to pop up in these kinds of conspiracies. Oh, absolutely. There are tons of theories about government involvement in cattle mutilations. A lot of it stems from reports of unmarked helicopters and strange lights being seen near mutilation sites. Like those black helicopters everyone's always talking about. Exactly. And it's easy to see why people connect those dots. Unmarked helicopters, mysterious lights, cattle turning up mutilated. It feeds into all those fears about secret government experiments and cover-ups. Yeah, it's like, who are you going to call when things get weird? Yeah. Definitely not the government, right? Yeah. But, okay, there's another set of theories we need to talk about, and these are a little more, well... Out there. Yeah, let's go with out there. I'm talking about the occult, ritualistic stuff. Okay, so this is where things get a little tricky. We have to be careful and stick to the facts. The truth is, there's not a lot of hard evidence to support those kinds of theories. No pentagrams or chanting caught on camera. Not that I'm aware of. And while those theories are out there, we have to be careful not to jump to conclusions, you know? Just because something looks like it could be ritualistic doesn't mean it is. Right. We got to stick to the evidence. Speaking of evidence, what about the investigations themselves? I mean, surely someone 
somewhere is trying to figure out what's going on. Of course, but these investigations are tough. Imagine you're a detective, right? You get called to a scene, but the evidence is often scarce, exposed to the elements, maybe even contaminated. It's not like CSI where they have all those fancy tools and a pristine crime scene. And on top of that, you've got all this public pressure to find answers. Mm -hmm. People are freaked out. Rumors are spreading like wildfire. It's got to be tough to stay objective. It definitely adds a whole other layer of complexity. You've got law enforcement trying to sift through natural explanations, potential human involvement, and then these truly unexplained events. It's a lot to handle. It's like trying to solve a puzzle where half the pieces are missing and right. everyone's watching you, waiting for you to put it all together. Exactly. And in the meantime, while everyone's debating theories and speculating, there are real people whose lives are directly affected by this. Ranchers who are losing their livelihoods, communities living in fear, oh, right? Absolutely. And that human cause is something we can't forget about. Imagine finding your livestock mutilated, not knowing who or what is responsible. It's got to do something to you. It messes with your sense of security, your peace of mind. It's like a real-life horror movie, and these people are living it. It's a lot to wrap your head around. And yeah. speaking of shadowy figures, we can't talk about cattle mutilations without addressing the, let's say, the perceived involvement of the government. Right. It's like the government conspiracy theories are almost unavoidable with this topic. It's true. I mean, think about it. Unidentified objects in the sky, strange lights near mutilation sites whispers of secret experiments, it all just fuels the fire, doesn't it? Absolutely. And the sources we looked at, they really highlight this deep-seated distrust that a lot of people have when it comes to the government's role in all of this. Cover-ups, misinformation, you name it. It's like everyone's seen the X-Files one too many times. Yeah. But seriously, is there any weight to these claims of government cover-ups? Or is it just our natural instinct to fill in the blanks when we're faced with something we don't understand? It's tough to say for sure. I mean, there have definitely been cases where government agencies have been, let's say, less than transparent with information. Right. Looking at you, Area 51. Exactly. But here's the thing. Just because we don't have all the answers, just because there are these gaps in our knowledge, it doesn't automatically mean there's a cover-up. Sometimes the truth is just, well messy. So where do we go from here? How do we even begin to unravel a mystery that spans decades and crosses continents? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? But there's actually some really interesting stuff happening in the world of forensic science that could help shed some light on these cases. Okay, I'm listening. Tell me we're not talking about just dusting for hoof prints here. We are way past hoof prints, my friend. We're talking about DNA analysis, advanced tissue sampling, isotopic studies tools that were practically science fiction just a few decades ago. So we could potentially use cutting edge science to solve a mystery that feels like it's straight out of like a campfire story. That's the beauty of it. But it's not just about the technology itself, it's about collaboration. We need scientists working with law enforcement, veterinarians teaming up with animal behaviorists. It's gotta be a team effort. So maybe the answer isn't about finding that one smoking gun, but about connecting the dots, putting all these pieces of the puzzle together. Exactly. We need to bring together all the tools we have, scientific evidence, eyewitness accounts, even those gut feelings that tell us when something isn't quite right. And maybe, just maybe. That's what makes this whole thing so fascinating. It's a reminder that there are still mysteries out there, things that challenge our understanding and push us to keep searching for answers. It's like this giant puzzle that we keep coming back to, trying to figure out where those missing pieces go. Well, folks, there you have it. We've gone deep on the strange world of cattle mutilations, the history, the theories, the very real impact on people's lives. While we may not have all the answers, we've hopefully given you plenty to think about. It's a mystery that continues to fascinate, and maybe, just maybe, with a little more time and investigation, we'll finally crack the code. Until then, keep asking questions, stay curious, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to finally solve this enduring mystery. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.